Hey guys, this is John from the Expansive Music Academy. Today, I'm gonna to show you my 10 top tips for beginners in Ableton. Having used Logic for the past 12 years and most of my students in Ableton, I decided to use Ableton exclusively for my productions. And it took me about a week to start flying around Ableton as quick as I could in Logic. And here are my 10 top tips I picked up on the way. And I really think if you're a beginner, these will really help your workflow out. Number one is utilizing the help view box. If you can see in the bottom left hand here, you have a little box and it contains a lot of text. Anywhere I hover over, it tells me exactly what it does. If I go over here, it's telling me exactly what this folder does. If I go over here, it tells me exactly what this does. If, if I go up here, it tells me what the different buttons do. Very handy and very helpful for you to start navigating around Ableton and how to understand what the different features do. Number two would be grouping and color coding your tracks. So as you can see my project over here, it looks like I have a few channels. But if I press this button here, I'm going to ungroup them and you'll see that I have all my drums grouped into one channel and it really makes my session smaller and easy to navigate through. If I go to bass, I've got two or three channels in there. If I go to pads, I've got loads of channels in there, etc, etc. Makes it super easy for me to navigate around the project. And if you come up with your own color coding system, anywhere you look on the page, you're going to be knowing what you're looking at. Let me show you how to do this quickly. If you see down here, I've got two channels. What I do is I click on one track, hold down shift, click on another, that selects them both. Then if I hold down control, open up this menu box, if I click group tracks, that is then grouped. Now, if I click this button here, it opens and closes my group to tidy up my arrange view. Now what I wanna do, if I wanna color code them all, I select them again by holding down shift and selecting them all. Then I click on control, click, bring up this menu. And then for instance, I could turn them into a dark blue, just like that. Very simple and easy to navigate around my page. Number three would be how to easily audition sounds using Simpler. I'm gonna open up my drums here and press play. You can hear my drums. What we're gonna focus on is this channel here, which is the clap channel. Now, if I go to one of my sample folders and I go to the claps, for instance, what I can do is I can easily audition different sounds. So check this. I'm keep changing them now. Change it to that clap. Different one there. That's great. So number four would be how to drag in more than one audio file at once. Say if I want to drag in a cl some claps, hats, kicks, all together like this, I can select the, all these loops and I wanna drag them into the project. If I do it like this, it's gonna put them all in a row. But if I select them all now and bring it to an empty channel and then hold down command and you see it puts them all on separate tracks. Number five is adjusting the loop preview volume. So we're talking about drums again and let's say for instance, I've got a top loop that I like. so. We'll go to these top loops, press, press play, go through these top loops. Say for instance though, I can't hear that top loop enough. If I click tab, this goes to the session view. And if you see in the bottom right hand corner, you have the preview volume. So I put this right up now, I press play in the loop. You can hear it's much easier for me to hear. And for me, if a loop is too quiet or too loud, it's hard for me to choose the right loop. Six would be how to see two plugins at once. When I'm working, I like to always look at multiple plugins at the same time and see how they're interacting with each other. So for instance, if I go to my master chain, I click on my limiter, it opens up. But then if I click on my meter, the other one, the limiter closes down. And Ableton have set this up as a default. I click on live, I go to preferences, and I go to the plugins, you can see over here, multiple plugin windows. If I click on, this is going to allow us to open more plugins at the same time. If I go to open up my limiter, you can see I can, I can have two plugins at the same time. Really handy for me when it comes to workflow. So number seven is how to enable VST plugins. When I moved over from Logic and I opened up Ableton, I looked for all my third party plugins and I couldn't find them anywhere. And as a default setting, you have to turn this on to see all your other plugins. 
So what you do, you go to File, Preferences, you go to Plugins, and then you click this button here, Use VS2 Plugin from System Folders. What that'll do, depending on how many plugins you've got, will scan your computer to find all the plugins you've got. After a few short moments, if you go to Plugins, you will see all your plugins here. Number eight, how to add keyboard shortcuts. Another thing I noticed is that when I wanted to, for instance, record audio or MIDI, there was no button to do that. I had to always go up here and click the record button. If you go over here, this opens a key mapping window and then you click on the record button and then you can assign any keyboard command to it. So for instance, I'm gonna assign it R. Now I'll close this off and when I press R on the keyboard, it arms a record function, easily allowing me to record MIDI in or record a vocal. Number nine, disable Ableton's analysis files. One thing I noticed when going through all my samples, when I used them, Ableton would create its own file and add that to my sample folder. Things started to get really messy and I had to look into what was going on. And this is another default Ableton setting. So if you go to live, you go to preferences, you go to file folder, cr create analysis file off. This will stop Ableton from creating analysis files and clogging up your sample folders. And number 10, creating MIDI from audio. Say if I have an audio loop and I really like the melody of the loop, but I don't like the sound, something like this. I really like the melody it's playing, but I'm not so hot on the synth sound. If I click on the loop, then I do control click, it brings up this option. Then if I go to convert MIDI to new MIDI track, click this, Ableton analyzes the audio loop and creates the MIDI information for me. Now Ableton has created a new MIDI track for me. So if I click on this now and I click on the MIDI information, you can see it's created the MIDI notes. So if I solo it, I press play. You can hear it's the exact same notes, but it's a different sound. Ableton has also created a sound similar for me. Now I can change the synthesizer and create a sound that I really like using the melody from a loop. So that was my 10 top tips for beginners using Ableton. If you like this video, make sure you check out our Facebook group for exclusive videos, offers and tips. I really hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you guys soon.